periodic table. At the end of 18th century, scientists are done with discovering 23 elements. Now, slowly and gradually, as the time passes, scientists start discovering other elements also. So now it's very difficult for the scientists to memorize the physical and chemical properties of all these elements. So what the scientists do, they decided to arrange all the elements in a systematic way. Mendeleev is the scientist that tries to arrange the elements in a systematic way in the form of table. He arranged the elements in the periodic table according to the increasing atomic mass, but Unfortunately, when other elements discovered, scientists are unable to put all that element in a systematic way according to increasing atomic number in Mendeleev's table. So later on, there was a scientist named as Moseley. That scientist gave the idea of atomic number and he arranged all the elements that was discovered till then in the periodic table according to the increasing atomic number. So the table that Moseley arranged is actually called as the modern periodic table. Modern periodic table is actually an important tool in chemistry. For instance, if you know the chemical and physical properties of an element which is present in a group, so it means now you have the idea about the physical and chemical properties of all the other elements which are present in that same group. Periodic table helps you to find out the reactivity of all the elements. It tells you the position of the elements, atomic number, atomic masses. Moreover, it tells you and gives you an idea about the elements. Either they can make ionic bond, covalent bond and much more. What is a periodic table? A table showing systematic arrangement of elements is actually called as the periodic table. Here, it is based on the periodic law. Now, what is the periodic law? According to periodic law, the elements are arranged in order of their increasing atomic number. Second thing that we're bothering here is the periodic manner. Now, what is periodic manner here? It means that the elements are arranged in the periodic table in a way that after some interval of elements, the properties of the elements start repeating again. The meaning of what periodic here is also repeating. So after an interval of some elements, say for example, 8, 18 or 32, after these interval of elements, the properties of the elements start repeating. This repetition is actually called as a manner, a periodic manner. And this is why this table is called as a periodic table. In the periodic table, we have some vertical columns and we have some horizontal rows also. Now, these horizontal rows are actually called as the periods and the vertical columns are called as the groups. Now, have a look at this periodic table. As I just told you, the vertical columns here are actually called as the groups and the horizontal rows here are actually called as the periods. So we have seven periods in the periodic table. These three periods are actually called as short periods because they have two and eight and eight elements in them. Period number four, five, six, Seven, these are the long periods with 18 and 32 elements in them. Moreover, we have two groups here, two main groups, group number A and group number B. The group number A is actually called as the normal group or representative group. On the other hand, the group number B is actually called as the transition elements group. How these elements are arranged in the groups and in the periods? There is a criteria according to which scientists put these elements in the certain periods and groups. The valence electrons of all these elements decide that in which group they will reside. So say for example, we have this beryllium here. The valence electron of beryllium is two. So that is why this beryllium is part of group number two. Now let's talk about fluorine. The valence electron of fluorine are seven. That is why this fluorine is present in group number Seven elements are arranged in the periods according to their highest principal quantum number. Say, for example, here we have calcium. The highest principal quantum number of this calcium is four. That is why it's present in period number four. 
so this is how the elements are arranged in the period and in the group now what all these different colors indicates here as you can see we have the series of red color here all these elements which are in the red color these are the alkali metals the one which are in the orange color these are the alkali earth metals the one in the light blue color these are the transition metals the one in this violet color these all elements are post transition metals then we have the dark yellow color one this series is actually called as metalloids the one that are in the light green these are the reactive non metals then we have the one in this pink color the one who are in the pink color these are the noble gases or the non reactive gases in the periodic table now let's talk about these two interesting series these are lanthanides and actinides now question arises here why these lanthanides and actinides are not present here according to the increasing atomic number lanthanides and actinides should present here but why they are not present here the answer is very simple just because of their chemical properties elements are arranged in the periodic table not only on the basis of the atomic number but on the basis of the properties also these lanthanides and actinides have different properties they are radioactive in nature and due to this property these lanthanides and actinides are present down here rather than here and these are called as lanthanides and actinides due to their starting element lanthanum and actinum now an other question here that why this helium is present here according to the increasing atomic number this helium should be here due to their properties because the property of the helium is resembling with the properties of the noble gases it's a non reactive gas that is why helium is present in the group number 18 group 8a because it's a part of noble gases so now it's very clear that why this modern periodic table has this strange shape the modern periodic table has this strange shape just because the elements are arranged according to different criteria the name of the elements that are in the red color these all are actually the gases the name of the elements that are in the black color they are all the solids and the one that are in the blue color these are all the liquids and some chemical properties of the elements are unknown which are present here we don't know about their properties so that's why we can't say either they are liquid solid or gases now here we just choose one element from the periodic table and this is the information we get from the element here you can see oxygen name of the element here you can see capital o which is the symbol of the element here you can see it which is the atomic number here you can see the atomic weight the mass number then the periodic table is actually classified into four major blocks s block p block d block and f block now if the valence electron of any element resides in s subshell so that element is the part of s block elements on the other hand same goes for p block elements if there are some elements and their valence electrons are present in the p subshell so it's very clear that these are p block elements from group number 13 to group number 18 all the elements are the p block elements except the helium because its valence electrons are present in s subshell so have a look at this periodic table the one that are present in the red color these are all the s block elements because their valence electrons are present in s subshell and the one that you can see in the yellow color these are all the p block elements because their valence electrons are present in p block what are d and f block elements now the elements whose valence electrons are present in d subshell are the d block element from group 3 to group number 12 the elements are d block elements the elements whose valence electrons are present in f subshell these are called as the f block elements the one that you can see in the blue color these are all the d block elements because their valence electrons are present in d subshell and the one that you can see in the green color these are all the f block elements because their valence electrons are present in the f subshells so yes this is all about over today's lecture 
If you want more such videos, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.